I did not learn any boundaries in my life. And I got hit like a ton of bricks multiple times. And I was like, you know what? I think I need to learn this thing called boundaries. It's really weeded a lot of people out of my life. You are a bit of a gamer girl, are oh, you? Yeah, like not even a bit, like, like a little too much probably. <laughs> How often are we playing? What games are we playing? Oh, how often do I play? All the time. The answer is always. Um, <laughs> I like even here in London, I brought my Switch with me. So I've been like gaming every night. <laughs> so when I'm traveling, I play like kind of more like simple games that make me not so stressed out. So I play like, Mario Kart or Mario Party. But then when I'm home, I play really high octane games like Call of Duty. I love how you go in with the light Mario Kart, throwing some like <laughs> coins and stuff. And then you're like, do you know what? I'm going in when you know I'm at I home really on Call of like Duty. I like to f*** <laughs> it up. <laughs> <laughs> I got things to do. Mama needs tending, the house needs cleaning. I'm done pretending that I can live in a sim. It ain't real. What the show, when you really boil it down, is all about mindset and changing your mindset, isn't it? When do you think you've put the brakes on in your life and switched up your mindset? Um, probably the pandemic was the biggest, was the biggest uh, reset. It was the first time that I'd ever um, been home, uh, for, for longer than a couple months, probably mm. like since I was, you know, nine years old, I would say, cause I've been acting since I was five. I'm 25 now. So it's a long time. That's a good uh, 20 years, babe. It's a good 20 years, babe. It's a good 20 years, <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know, it, it was the first time that I, I got to kind of sit for a second and it was, uh, you know, revolutionary in a lot of ways. I actually, got to figure out my own pace of, of what I want my life to feel like and, and who I am. And, and I learned a lot um, of, I think, my boundaries in life and, and, mm. and, and what I want in my friendships and what I want in my relationships. And uh, uh, all the noise was gone. And I had to kind of find, figure out what the hell the noise was inside my own mind. <laughs> and, I, and I had to kind of pick through that and, and, and figure that out. And it was... Um, it was really, you know, revolutionary, I would say for me. Mm. And the, the whole, we talk about boundaries quite a lot in this podcast. I mean, mm. I have like zero boundaries. My boundaries do not exist. <laughs> like anyone can just like come on in. And I'm like, yeah, bye. Like really trying to work on it. It's a process. Yes. For you, how has that helped you shape your friendships? Because that is such a difficult thing to get right. I think every relationship in your life, um, I think boundaries are super important. Uh, I think figuring out what your boundaries are and being able to implement those. And I think one big thing that I talk to my therapist a lot about is this incredible book called The Fourfold Way. And I suggest everybody reads it. It is, it is just fantastic. It um, has helped me through a lot of really difficult times in my life. Um, but one thing that it talks about is speaking your truth without blame or judgment. And that if you are casting blame or judgment, you're not speaking your truth. You're, 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 um, you're judging someone or you're blaming something on someone. And so part of, you know, realizing your boundaries and in, in actually enforcing your boundaries is speaking your truth without blame or judgment to people um, and seeing what you get back and listening to what you get back and learning from what you get back. Um, so boundaries are a new thing for me, too. I didn't grow up with any boundaries. I did not learn any boundaries in my life. And I got hit like a ton of bricks multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> and and I was like, you know what? I think I need to learn this thing called boundaries. <laughs> and, it's, <laughs> and it's been great. But it's been, it's really weeded a lot of people out of my life. It has weeded mm. a lot of people out of my life for the better. Yeah. Sometimes you need the cleanse, I think, <laughs> to work out like what your energy is, who you are as a person without mm. external influences all the time as well. Human connection matters so much, right? So it matters yeah. like... It, it really does matter. I think that's also what we learned through the pandemic is like isolation is not healthy <laughs> you know, like to a point. No. It's really good to be solo and really good to have, you know, autonomy in your life. But at the same time, human connection really matters. Um, so, you know, the thing with cleansing people out of your life, you really do start to realize like, oh, how does like this person make me feel? You know, and what do I what do I feel internally when I'm with you? And when I go away from you for a while and then we come back together, whether it be a friendship, 
um, you know, relationship, family, whatever it is in your life. How do I feel around you? And do you make me uh, feel good? And it's honestly as simple as that. And when you start to really figure out like what makes you feel good and what makes you feel whole, um, you can kind of follow your own like true north, you know what I mean? Your, your, your own intuition and like your body will tell you more than your mind will tell you. I feel like most of the time, but mm. our mind ignores our kind of physical reactions to things. Um, and you should really listen to your heart rate. You know what I mean? Listen to your heart in actually the way that your nervous system reacts to situations and people. Oh, babe, I'm taking notes. <laughs> I'm literally like, I feel like I'm at the purpose now. I'm like, boundaries <laughs> need to work on. Controlling boundaries. heart rate. Ba- need to <laughs> boundaries in big. Boundaries. Underline. 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 <laughs> but it's so amazing you have that really strong sense of your own voice as well. Because I think it must have been like when you actually think about your career, like when you were saying you started at five and then you've been in over like 50 TV shows and movies like that. Hunt, that is a CV and a half. <laughs> it's a crazy number. Yeah, it's a crazy, it's a crazy number. number. <laughs> like how have you learned to really respect your inner voice and find your voice? What have been some turning points in finding your voice for you? I mean, growing up, you know, it's just like, it's so funny. I remember being like 18 and I was like, man, I really got it on lock. I feel good. I don't know what people are talking about that like you like don't feel confident. <laughs> and then I like turned 19 and I was like, whoa, whoa, <laughs> whoa. Like, you know, uh, my like outward self was was like finally I think I finally realized that that's a, a thing and that, you know, public opinion is a thing or personal opinion is a thing and that some people just like just just don't like you because they don't like you. You know what I mean? Like it's, and it's you know, it just is what it is. Um, and so I think, you know, for me, I I I feel like I was in my own little bubble for a long time. And then my bubble got burst. I realized that there's a whole lot of feelings that people have about you and in general in life and and how to kind of keep that noise at bay. And, and that, I think, goes for anyone in any career. It's really all about figuring out who you are and what it is that makes you happy. You know, it, it is so cliche, but I, I, I always operated for a long time I operated um under this guise of what I wanted to achieve outwardly and what I wanted to do for outward except exception you know in 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 my even just my small groups in my life you know people around me and I was just people pleasing people pleasing people pleasing people pleasing and I think a big turning point I've had in the last year honestly the last year and a half has been to say like fuck it a little bit and and to 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 people please myself <laughs> you know mm. and figure it figure out what it is that chloe really needs in this moment and and what that looks like without um without blame or judgment for myself you know kind of unabashed self-acceptance um which is something that i you know is like radical for me because i never I never did that. Um, and if anything ever happened that went wrong, it was always my fault in my own mind and how I perceived it. And that anxiety and that guilt is really intense to live with. I think keep the noise at bay or start to start to keep that outward noise at bay and to really, really look inward and and figure out who I am and just have really meaningful conversations with those around me and have really honest conversations with those around me. And people will tell you exactly who they who they are, you know? Mm. They just will. I mean, that <laughs> epiphany is a stunning it, one, isn't it? It's huge. People always said this to me when I was younger. They're like, when you grow up, you're gonna learn that like, a lot of the doesn't matter. A lot of people and things that are going on around you, it doesn't matter. And you're gonna, you're gonna like, learn to be there for yourself. And it's one of those things that like, all of a sudden I turned 25 and my like frontal, cortex of my brain like formed I like, felt it form and then I was like oh <laughs> f- it <laughs> <You know? laughs> like a hundred percent it was like it was there's a huge difference from 23 to 24 to 25 like I feel like every year is a massive growth spurt uh internally yeah and I I mean for it. I just hit my early 30s and I'm still trying to find the words like I'm like f- uh, it. Yeah. and I'm like yes, yes. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, listen, I still struggle a lot with it. Good. <laughs> but it is it is a strong upward an upward, you know, steady pace to the peak. Mm, yeah. It's it's like it's the climb, basically, to quote. You know what? Miley Cyrus. In the in the words of Miley Cyrus, <laughs> it's the climb. I.e. Hannah Montana. It's the climb, babe. <laughs> It is. Who knew and we you were going to go there? That song's incredible. No yeah. one would take that away. That song is fantastic. <laughs> yes. As you can tell, I'm thinking about it. It's like the moral message of that song is it's, actually it is very strong. It is the pinnacle of existence. That song <laughs> is fantastic. It can dictate so many things in my life. <laughs>